had an amazing event on crypto and NFT for dummies. How NFT and crypto are playing important role into the digital economy and how the crypto exchange is supporting consumers and industry at large. So Carl, uh, I think we're definitely heading towards the digital economy and today actually AE announced the digital authority. So I think we're heading there and NFT plays a key role of that. What do you think? Like, What is the role of NFT and crypto art might play in the future economy? The activity and engagement of consumers growing. Uh, I think trust is growing. Obviously volatility is a big issue. So we need to address that and understand that a little bit more over time. But um, it's going to be at the heart of, of the future digital economy in some capacity. Uh, regulations are going to drive a lot of it, but also I think um, just the fact that you can innovate uh, and do things differently. Hi, Wael. Hi. Good to have you here. Thank you. So you're a multi-talented artist since 1996, almost more than 25 years. You've been like, you've done lots of diversified types of art, artwork and consultation. Since 1996, you've been a classical artist. So tell us about this classical art and do you think, like, are you considering to convert your work to NFT? Is it something it's threatening you? Is it something you're convinced to do? I would love to know more about that. Uh, thank you. Uh, actually, it's, it's not threatening me. It's um, uh, any artist or any human is always evolved with what's surrounding him. You start as a classic and you develop uh, as, uh, as digital and then you still link to the classic. I started with, the, with my uh, colorful culture and with my colorful farmers and start to implement them in my, in my oriental surrealism where they are the soldiers of, the, of thy message. I put them in any field. I can make them fly, I can make them build bridges, I can make them build castles, but in a surrealistic oriental way. And then I build the, the idea and the medium and the base and material accordingly. And each time there is things evolve in new material, evolve in a new subject. But definitely, uh, I think we're going to reach to a place where I take my, my classic and make it as digital. At the same time, keep for both balance. Because nowadays, uh, you have to have a digital NFT because it makes a living for artists these days. Long time ago, arts, they die and they don't have money. But now it's a chance for people to convert some of their classic to NFTs so that they can have, they can have a good living, at least decent living, while they are still alive. So uh, definitely I'm with the, with the, with the new uh, era of NFTs, but same time, I love the touch of brush and paint and, and everything. Hi, Jawad. You co-founded Terra Virtua, one of the most leading NFT marketplaces. Please tell us about Terra Virtua and how it's supporting NFTs. Sure. I mean, we found the Terra Virtua in 2018. The idea was that everything was moving to digital, but it didn't work in, it hadn't moved the same way that physical assets have been owned in the past. It just became rental. Amazon became all about um, renting books effectively, um, Spotify was renting music, and movies was about streaming from Netflix. But before you could collect music, you could collect records and albums and trade them. And that all went away. So that transition to digital was difficult. And what we saw was an opportunity to bring that back using blockchain technology and make something which brought back the sense of ownership and collection. And to that end, what we wanted to do was develop a whole ecosystem around it because right now you'll see a lot of marketplaces that sell art or around celebrity, but that's not really, NFTs are about everything that has made the transition to digital. And it's also about making that availability of revenue come back to the creators. Because right now, let's say that you um, write a book. Um, when you publish it, you get royalties from the first one. But if it's sold 10 times, the creator in the real world has never seen any revenue from it. So now what happens is that with the NFTs, you've got the ability to reward the creator for the work they've done, making sure creators get rewarded. They're not an asset. You know, they're not a commodity. They are the lifeblood of society. And so really, that was our thinking around it. And so the team that we assembled in Terra Virtua are all like-minded individuals. Gary Bracey, my co-founder, he was like one of the biggest people in video gaming over the last 30 years. Wow. And so he was the first guy who persuaded movie studios to make uh, video games based on movies. And so as a result, we were able to walk into the likes of Paramount and Legendary and music studios and get them to agree to give us the IP that they guard so tightly and allow us to make NFTs around them. But so everything that we do is about taking these assets, bringing them in, but also making high quality NFTs. And by NFTs, if you take something which is physical, 
Just making it digital often isn't enough. Do something you can't do in the real world. And so if you have, let's say, an action figure, make it animated. If you've got like a, a, a graphic novel, make it so you can peel the layers away and look at how we intended for you to see it. Go from the pencils all the way up. So it's about bringing innovation, not just a simple trans translation, and also about doing things like making sure that the creators get rewarded. Hi, Arshad. You co-founded Arabian Worst Limited. How your company is supporting crypto? So the whole idea behind Arabian Bourse was to bring a marketplace where virtual assets can be traded in a more regulated manner. Uh, we have seen in the last few years virtual assets, especially if you talk about cryptocurrencies, the markets have really shot up and there has been a lot of excitement and there's been a lot of participation, especially from the retail point of view that they want to get part of uh, this growing industry. The underlying technology of blockchain uh, changed the whole mechanism. Like, okay, still uh, using a Bitcoin or other uh, virtual assets, uh, you can do investments, you can do lending and borrowing, you can do uh, microfinance, uh, same things that used to happen in traditional markets, but traditional markets, the way they have been structured and because of the lack of techn technology innovations, uh, they were not able to reach or penetrate uh, to a wider segment of the world because still if we see half of the world is still unbanked and uh, this is quite unfortunate. But now with these new asset class, especially in the form of virtual assets, riding on a very strong technology of blockchain is changing the whole very concept and that's why it's important for exchanges like Arabian Bourse uh, to establish themselves and bring a very well-regulated marketplace. Because uh, with the way uh, virtual assets uh, has grown uh, significantly in the last uh, 10 years, uh, there has been, of course, some uh, bad incidences because of which people lost money, there were hacking attempts, uh, there were scams and things like that. And that was largely because this industry grew uh, without uh, regulations catching up with them. And now what we are trying to do is to bring good practices, good regulations that have uh, established the traditional markets and created a transparency and brought a lot of investor confidence because of the way you do the business. And the way that we run the markets, uh, we run it in a very transparent manner. So we are an exchange where uh, KYC and uh, compliance is given a top priority. Uh, so we want to ensure the marketplace is secured and it's uh, not allowing interaction between someone whom you don't really want to have on your market because on the other because as a market you have uh, two legs of it so um, on one side you have buyers and on the other side you have sellers so imagine if any one of these uh, buyers and sellers if some uh, uh, some uh, uh, bad reputation or uh, a background uh, which is uh, m uh, which is a concerning background comes in and it starts dealing with others so it's kind of a ripple effect it creates a yeah. chain uh, that uh, links others also in the in that kind of uh, diversity stay tuned for our next conversation at the capital club